Why do secondary research and how is it used? Secondary research already exists. Primary research is new research yet to be done. It's typically faster to access secondary data than it is to conduct new primary research from scratch. Secondary data is also usually cheaper in dollars and in project management and analysis hours. How do we use secondary? In lots of ways. Always do secondary research before you run primary. First and foremost, doing secondary research first may allow you to skip doing primary research. If the answers to your research objectives have already been found, secondary is all you need. Also, doing secondary research first can help you formulate a more accurate primary research cost estimate. How, you ask? Many primary research projects involve recruiting a qualified group of respondents. The more niche these audiences are, the more expensive they are to recruit. Secondary can help you find incidence levels. For example, you may be trying to survey young fitness fanatics' intent to try a new cross-training class, and you may want to survey only those people who have tried such a class elsewhere. Secondary may tell you that only 4% of your city's adults 18 to 29 years old have ever tried a cross-training class, whereas 30% of the same age group may say they belong to a gym or fitness club. If you're estimating how time-consuming and costly it'll be to access the cross-training audience versus the traditional gym member audience, you're now better armed for a conversation with SurveyMonkey or with your boss about recruiting costs. Knowing the specifics in advance may help you avoid an awkward conversation with your boss when you ask for one budget before a project begins, but then have to go back to ask for a higher budget after. Secondary also helps you draft wiser research hypotheses. For example, you may find an industry report saying Ontario's new gym members typically look into the online reputation before they sign up for a class of over three months length. You might now hypothesize that your cross-training prospects might expect to do the same. Or you might hypothesize that they'll be reluctant to sign up for a membership of over three months length unless you give them a free class first. Secondary helps you determine likely segment breaks such as age or income brackets. For example, should you ask respondents if they're 18 to 24 years old and 25 to 29? Or should you ask if they're 17 to 26 and 27 years old and up? Only one of those age brackets synchronizes with the data of Statistics Canada. Choose the wrong one, and you'll be unable to extrapolate your survey results to that of the larger population. Secondary research also allows you to fill in more informed and complete competitor lists for your primary research to answer questions such as, which of the following stores have you shopped at in the past six months? Secondary helps you draft more complete criteria lists. For example, a standard industry report might tell you that most Ontario grocery shoppers look for breadth of selection, unique items, proximity, when they make their decision of which grocery store to shop at. That might be a very reasonable place to start if you're doing a survey on typical retail shopping behavior. These are just a few of the reasons why doing secondary research first is beneficial, whether you end up doing primary research after or not. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And as always, like, subscribe, and follow me on the Twitters, 